Hello, welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming Using Scala. Uh, in this video we're going to continue doing our implementation of our project uh, and we're still in the chapter on polymorphism. So let's remember where we left off last time. We had just made it so that you could basically log in. You, uh, we popped up a dialog box asking for the username and the password and we checked those against the server and then we do some things. And one of the things that we're not doing right now is that currently, if we come back up to here, we are setting the instructor menu to be enabled regardless of, of whether the whether someone actually manages to log in and whether the person who logs in is an instructor or not. Well, so we need to fix this. We need to make it so that this is only enabled in the situation where uh, it is an instructor that is actually logged in. And so I need to have some uh, some way of, of knowing who logged in. And right now the problem is that our valid user is only returning a boolean. So did it work, did it not work? And I would like to make it so that in addition to that it actually also, instead of storing the boolean, it actually returns to us a uh, information about the user themselves. And I am going to make this a type option user. So this is this is the Scala style. Of, if you happen to know Java, you'd probably just make this a user and set it to null. Um, but it's it's much better style if something has the possibility to not have a value to use the option type for it. And by default, or when we start off, we don't have a, a user logged in. I'm also going to make it so that find user, instead of returning a boolean, returns an option user. So instead of false, we would return none. And then here, if that's true, then I'm going to return some user, else I'm going to return none. Yeah. And that, of course, that making that change introduces an error back over here, because we currently say if, um, with that following it. I'm going to introduce another check here. First off, if the username If they don't enter a username, well, guess what? They probably know that they weren't entering anything. So I'm just going to skip everything. Uh, and that could be they hit cancel, uh, whatever. And I don't need to tell them the login failed if they typed in cancel or if they didn't bother typing in a username. The next thing I'm going to do is set user equal to the result of that call. Now, if user dot non-empty, so the option type, you can ask it if it's empty or not. None is empty and sum is not empty. So if I get to here, I know that I actually have a valid user and then I can, can do this stuff. Um, what about backup in here with our desire to where is this under login? Okay, right here we have this thing. There are two other changes I would like to do here. First, I want to make it so the instructor menu only gets enabled if it was actually an instructor that logged in. Okay. Um, that's simple enough to do matching on the user. Uh, first, let's put in, okay, so we have a case. We want the case, the only case we really care about here is when I have an instructor in there. And in that situation, I want to do this. And to make it so that we don't get match exceptions, I will uh, put this case in here as well 
that matches everything else but doesn't do anything. Um, the other thing that I'd like to do is I'd like to make it so that if you successfully log in, the login menu item is uh, deactivated. Okay, so I want to activate this on, on a uh, um, on an instructor login and I want to deactivate this whole thing. Now it turns out that's going to require a little bit of change in the way that the code is set up here. Uh, and the reason is because I have to be able to call uh, enabled on the menu item itself. And the way I was writing this before I wasn't actually in the scope of the menu item, I was in the scope of uh, the action. And I need to be in the scope of the menu item when I do this. Um, oh yeah. Okay. So we now have the menu item login. It sets its action. Notice this repeats the login. This is one thing I'm not necessarily happy with in the Scala libraries. When you create a menu item, you have to give it at least a string. However, if you reset the action inside of there, the action takes a string, and this one goes above it. So I could leave this blank, um, but I'll just, you know, I'm duplicating it here because, I don't know, I feel uneasy making this an empty string for some reason. We call login, uh, and then we do this and what I was saying I want to do earlier is if someone logs in and this is whether it's an instructor or a student I want to make it so that we said enabled to false and so that will be the enabled on our menu item I want to do that for an instructor I'm going to add another case here which would be anyone logging in And do that. And now let's run and see what this looks like. So let's log in first as J Doe. Sure enough, we get this uh, item here, and I have no instructor, and also my login is blocked out. You know, just to make it so it's at least slightly more impressive, let's go ahead and let's add one more semester spring semester. And now if I run this again and I log in as the instructor then I get the instructors are enabled, the login is still disabled and I have that. Okay, so at this point I now feel that my login is completely done and the, what's lacking now is the ability to click on semesters and have it bring up courses. Another thing that's lacking now is having it so that the list of semesters and courses is appropriate for the user that's logged in. And so in the next video we'll come back and we'll start adding interactivity to the semester list and the course list and make them show appropriate uh, information for the user that's logged in.